topic we have today is the mindset of the digital actuary. So without further ado, I'll, I'll pass that to Mr. Tan Sui Chie to give us an opening remarks for our virtual career fair. Mr. Tan, uh, Tan Sui Chie, would you like to <laughs> take over the floor? Yes, I would. Justin, Justin uh, thank you very much. Uh, 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 Justin, you are the president of Masa, right? Yeah, for this year. Yeah, yeah, of course for this year. So congratulations, and and it's good that uh, you approached me. Uh, I'm very happy to speak to uh, Malaysian students in Malaysia. And last year I also went to Masa. Yes. Uh, August or September, uh, I, I can't remember, and there were many nice photographs. Yeah. So so um, uh, maybe Kainan, can you also take a couple of print screen? Uh, print screen. You know you know how to do print screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Print screen and then, and then send the print screen to me because I'd like to take some pictures with you. All. So the, the, uh, I, I'm very pleased because I want to uh, share with you uh, what I want to, uh, what you are interested in. But if you can ask me questions, uh, whether to the chat box uh, or, or talk to me even better, then I will make, give you more meaningful, um, I share with you meaningful observations. Uh, I, I didn't want to use the word advice because Advice means that I have the answer, but it, it, I can only know what is a good advice if I know where what where you are, because your self uh, awareness, your self knowledge is very important. Your self knowledge is important. But there's a reason why you are in Masa, and there's a reason why I'm asked to speak, and there's a reason uh, why we are here today, and it has to do with actuarial science. So that is the context. Yeah. So there's a context. So I'm very uh, happy. Uh, to give my perspective, and I reflected, uh, I, I, got may, I, I can speak for many hours on things like this, uh, but I reflected what is most relevant to you. Uh, you are, you are, you're mainly first to third year, right? first to third year, still studying in universities in Malaysia, correct? Correct. Can you, can you close to, uh, you nod your head, correct? Yeah, correct. Yes. Yeah, oh, correct. Yeah, yes, it's very easy to just say correct, right? Uh, so, so some of you who do want to show your face, you can also say correct, yeah? Uh, so, so, so there is a reason, that, and there's, uh, and, and there are, now how many of you are here, about 50, 60? Uh, yeah, 50, 50, 50, around 50. Around 50. Okay, uh, and, and I do not know what your life is going to be in the next uh, 30 to 50 years, but I would assume that you all want to be successful, be successful. And, and the, the, the reason you are, you chose actual science is because uh, you the teacher or you feel that you're actually quite good in mathematics, quite good in mathematics. I, I And I think that that is a key requirement, right? A key requirement. Uh, if you are not, um, if you are not good in mathematics, then it's going to be hard. Yeah. Good. Okay. What is good in mathematics? Yeah? I don't want to put grades and all that. You must be sort of in your class, in your secondary school, you are already the top few students in mathematics. Yeah. Uh, you, you must be because the, the journey, uh, you really must master your mathematics, yeah. But it doesn't mean that if you are average in mathematics, you will be unsuccessful. I didn't say that, yeah. Uh, uh, a, a lot of people were, but you decided to choose actual science because you are good in mathematics and you and you don't want to be a degree holder in uh, uh, mathematics and be a lecturer. Uh, maybe you're not that good, yeah. To be that good, to be specialized in mathematics or so theoretical, uh, is 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 uh, and you want to be world class in that? Yeah, be very uh, very big jump, yeah. But you also want to be practical. You want to find a job, a job which uses your mathematics, and maybe in a practical setting, uh, in a more uh, organizational setting, uh, in a problem sorting. So you didn't go for engineering, yeah, because mathematician can go to engineering, can go to physics, go to physics, right? Uh, or you can be going to mathematics. You didn't, uh, and also I think it's fair to say. Many people choose actuaries because they they want to be uh, the career they want to be financially successful because you hear somewhere actuaries are quite well paid. Uh, is that about right, uh, Dominic? About right? My my my, my categorization about right lah. Because otherwise you can go and study accounting lah. Or you can study business administration lah. Right. So you want to give me some response uh, on, on the chat line? I can say, yeah. So I so on that basis, uh, uh, I'm going to tell you the story. You see, if you're not going to respond, uh, I I won't be I won't go very far, you know, in, in my conversation with you. Yeah, you must uh, try to respond. 
But you don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you don't know how to respond, you can also say I do not know how to respond. <laughs> okay, you you see what I'm saying? Uh, okay. So this is. Uh, can you can you all see my slide now? Yeah. Can you see my slide? Uh, not really. Uh, maybe still loading. I think still loading. Ah, so yeah. slow. Ah. Can you see now? Um, no, not yet. Not huh? yet. Why so slow? Ah? Just now we had a uh, about three, three to five seconds of delay, right? Uh, uh but um, yeah, yeah, we can see now. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I see that. If, if, if okay. Uh, now, now you can see. Yeah, we can see. We can see the, can see uh, now? the slides. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so this is uh, who are we? How involved? Huh? So, I want to give you the story. Uh, basically, actually, the people who are good in mathematics. Um, uh, when I meet many of them in Malaysia, UK, Australia, uh, India, Africa, they are good methods and they want to apply their maths to have rewarding careers. Uh, very few students uh, at 18 or 19 say, I want to grow up and work in an insurance company. Yeah. Or I want to grow, grow up and work in a pension fund. Uh, they wouldn't say that because insurance company and pension fund are not uh, exciting companies, right? But 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 those companies have a lot of actual jobs. Yeah. So eventually you went there because there are a lot of actual jobs. Yeah. Uh, you, you you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Uh, so that's how we evolve, right? So if you but if you look into the history of actual science, uh, history of actual science. Uh, uh, this is uh, the history of actual science. Yeah. Can, can you all see the slide? You all can, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so about three four hundred years ago, uh, people start uh, doing probability uh, uh, people like Fermat and Pascal they are they are they are French actuaries uh, they were very good uh, uh, people like Gauss and Newton come later Fermat and uh, Pascal uh, were trying to solve the game of chance you know uh, one in six uh, according to a die one in 52 the game of chance which for us is quite uh, common now uh, and then they uh, they also uh, and and about that hundred years two hundred years they were also trying to construct tables of mortality in the UK mortality right uh, uh, because uh, uh, John Grant was one uh, they tried to do tables by looking at uh, death rates yeah uh, and, and over time actuaries began uh, uh, by looking at Capital redemption policies. Uh, capital redemption policies are annuities, uh, annuities without mortality. Then eventually they do annuities with mortality. So there's no life insurance there. No? There's no life insurance. That's how actuaries came. Uh, the IFOA was from 150 years ago, but I'm telling the story about 200 years ago, 250 years ago. So it's uh, people, so they were using uh, developments in mathematics uh, to solve problems uh, on interest rates. Uh, mortality, uh, uh, and of course, eventually went to morbidity, and, and I, I didn't go and do a lot of research in that. Uh, but it's only, uh, uh, and in the last 100 years, 100 to 150 years, insurance, uh, maybe 200 years, yeah, uh, equitable uh, insurance was born, right? And, and also pension schemes were born, yeah, pension scheme and pension. Uh, and, and many of them were mutuals at that time, yeah, so equitable, John Morgan. So, so the problem, uh, most of the insurance at the time uh, was really to promote mutual security. But eventually, uh, it was also, uh, they, they begin to make uh, surpluses, you see. So how do you dispute surpluses? So, so surpluses came into being, profits came into being. So that is the history. Lah, huh? uh, and and in, in more recent history, which in the last 100 years, uh, in the UK, uh, actuaries were very involved in uh, with profits with business, with profit business participating business. And you see quite a lot of it in Malaysia, Singapore. But now it's less and less in the UK already. Uh, now it's mainly investment link. That's because with profit business, uh, with the volatility of investment markets, uh, it's very hard to provide sufficient smoothing to allow the profits to be run uh, in a successful way, especially regulation. Yeah, uh, But the history until 1970, 
80, and the literature I study, uh, with profits was very big in the UK, and there was no investment link. Uh, investment link and unit link are the same thing. Uh, investment link and unit link uh, came, unit link came into uh, Southeast Asia uh, in 1992, and I, I was very responsible for it because I was in uh, Prudential, so introduced investment link. You all can still see the slide, right? Yes. Good, because I toggle, I toggle. Because I want to tell you the story, you see. Uh, so, so I didn't do much research, but I can remember all this. Right? So, uh, and I also studied a bit of history of mathematics. Lah. So, so in, in um, up to say 1600, right, uh, the mathematics has, has not gone into financial services. So when, so when uh, Pascal and Fermat, Pascal and Fermat are very interesting people, you know, uh, Pierre Fermat, uh, for the Fermat's theorem and Pascal, they were all very interesting people, uh, but they were more interested in mathematics. But if you filter into matter into actual science by De Moira, De Moira is a person in probability, and then then John Grant, they were saying to study uh, if there are uh, uh, mortality tables. Uh, oh, how many people die? How many? So they use expected expected values. And expected values can correspond to your Q, lah, huh? but then you must get your denominator right. So you're playing with it, huh? then it's construct table. But the actual compound interest doesn't have mortality, but eventually they have mortality. But that is years ago, no? that's 300, 400 years ago. Today, you may not do that already. Today, big data will tell you your likelihood of dying. Yeah? So you can see, the, but only 400 years, right? 400 years. So I'm telling the story now. So now I, I fast forward, huh? so there'll be profits business start coming. Then investment link came in, and I of course throw in my 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 side bit because I I I took the investment link ideas from UK to Singapore, yeah, and it's called pool link. So those who work in Prudential will know, uh, and then eventually a lot of people uh, went into it. Uh, and, but there was a company in Singapore and Tuesday they did introduce something very similar to it, but it didn't quite take off like, about ten years before. But the one which lady took off was Prudential, yeah. Uh, so, so with that, I go back to my my slide. Uh, you you can still see my slide, right? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Then, then I, I cannot tell you too much because some of them. Uh, okay. The next, uh, the next. Uh, this one. Can you see my cursor? Can you see my cursor? Yes. You can. Yes. Uh, can you see? Is that can you see my rising, right? Can you see my cursor? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You can. Okay. So you you can see I my can cursor. Then. Sorry. Can you see my I arrow can, or not? You can see it. Okay, so so 1950 to 2000, uh, this is modern portfolio th theory, capital asset pricing theory. Uh, that, that is another set. You all will study in your financial economics. You may have studied it. Uh, that is uh, on in the investment world because that has an impact uh, impact on on the profits business and investment link business. Then we also got into investment. Okay, this 1850, you know, okay, uh, uh, okay, okay, actually this way up, sorry. So this one, uh, uh, Frank Reddington uh, uh, was a big player. Frank Reddington. Frank Reddington was one of the chief actuaries in Prudential. Then this one uh, on modern portfolio theory, uh, the, the Institute of Actuaries or the British profession, in fact, the actual profession worldwide was a bit slow in embracing it. So there is something called financial economics. Financial economics is also interesting, but they are less to do with insurance, but more to investments. But eventually we need to understand this uh, to, do, to be a good actuaries in terms of uh, valuing assets and liabilities. And you must also remember, uh, you can also become an investment actuary, which is a very good option. Uh. It can be a risk actuary or investment actuary or a life actuary or a GI actuary or a health actuary. But, are, but, but that one, you must go all the way to be a fellow. Uh, otherwise, you you want to be a sifu. Uh, if you don't have a black belt, cannot tell people what to do. Ma. But but then can and you can you can also okay well, well maybe many then uh, maybe maybe fellow is uh your under taekwondo uh, or bruce lee right bruce lee okay bruce lee is uh bruce lee is the master already yeah uh, fellow is not master uh, a, fe a master reddington is a master but, but to be a fellow fellow means i would say uh competent uh, uh, uh competent uh, or maybe a virtuoso virtuoso uh, uh, but if you're associate uh you are competent yeah yeah, you're competent. If you're just a graduate, maybe uh, you are an, an advanced practitioner. Yeah, so it's just like Kung Fu, right? Uh, so, so Ip Man, he goes in here and takes Sika. Uh, Sika, that one master already. Yeah, he, he already got know everything inside out, you see. So Reddington is a Sika, right? But your, 
you're you're, you're a fellow, then you become a, a fellow. Uh, a fellow is a, 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 a competent uh, or, or virtuoso. So it's like the guy who fight with the eight man, with a two two table one, uh, that guy. The other guy who lost, uh, uh, that one is also quite good, but not even standard. Uh. So you, you, different grades, is it different grades? So Reddington is, is a master, okay? So so he, he was in this space. So I was talking about Reddington in this space. Uh, this one, mainly, uh, 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 quite many, many American economists led the way, but but eventually IFOA also picked up. Yeah. Uh, here, here with profits and guarantees, this one is, uh, these two box, uh, you can see between 1950 to 2000, uh, uh, it's uh, a lot of developments in uh, with profits business guarantees unit link and pension business in the UK, but 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 the kind of thinking they had, which I learned a lot from all my contemporaries, uh, became shaken because before 1975, uh, interest rates and markets were not so it's not so global. Everything is quite predictable. Even though the stock market crashes, uh, it is not so volatile as as the last. 25 years or 30 years. When after 70s, the oil shock came in, volatile market, suddenly they realized, and also we are more and more into equities and investments because there was also a belief that equities outrun, uh, out, uh, outbid, um, uh, outpace uh, fixed income portfolio uh, in terms of returns. Uh, am I speaking too? Uh, uh, do, do I say make sense to you, or is it too simple or too difficult, or is it about right? Yeah, about right. I think I think most of the students should be uh, right. able to understand. Uh, quite quite interesting, lah. Yeah, quite interesting. it's history. Quite interesting. Uh, I I I I said new angle, ma. So 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 they were uh, so then they realized that with profits business, uh, and pension business very hard to sustain. So pension business is going to decline. They have no longer accepting new members. You know why? Because the pensions they have at age 65 is a, expressed as a percentage of their final salary. How do you predict uh, your final salary at age 65 when, and also the annuity you pay out uh, uh, is also uh, uh, is for life. So longevity is improving. That means you got the annuity is more expensive. And the final salary because of inflation and matching becomes difficult. So, so that is a final salary scheme, which is called a defined benefits scheme. But a defined contribution scheme is different. That means what I give you is yours and it accumulates. How it accumulates is your business. Uh, that means the risk is passed to you already. Last time the risk is held by the trustee. Yeah. So, so investment link is also the same thing. With profits business, the company makes some promises. Sometimes it's not guaranteed bonuses accumulate. But the company has a big obligation to meet its bonuses. But investment link, I would just pass them. I say that, okay, invest in A, manage fund, invest in D, but the risk is passed to you. So all the last 25 years, a lot of risk has been passed to policy uh, to policyholders. Whether it's a good thing or not, I think it's highly debatable. Uh. It helps the insurance company to make sure that their position is strong, but the risk is passed to the policyholders. In my humble opinion, the policyholders actually should have the more smooth products. But smooth products are hard to achieve in a volatile market. And there are some problems with a volatile market. It has to do with securitization and the way the financial services industry is developed. Uh, we can't go into that, uh, but I'm very much in that space because financial services, we are over rewarding uh, certain activities which create a kind of volatility. Uh, people are making decisions for short-term gains and not for long-term good. Uh, that goes in the area of sustainability. So it's a very big argument, right? So, but don't go in, I, I won't go into that specifically, like, because I want to talk about your career, right? Uh, okay, so this is all quite interesting, right? Uh, so then, but general insurance, okay, when I joined the profession at that time, uh, uh, when I write to them, I got the first brochure uh, in 1978, uh, they don't have general insurance, uh, they don't have general, and they have something called operational research. Uh, general insurance came to the silver in 1980 or 81, uh, and, and I really graduated from LSC in 81. Uh, and it was due to three or four men, uh, Sidney Benjamin, uh, GBH, Professor Beard. They were keen that uh, we should offer general insurance. And over uh, and, and America society actually also don't have general insurance, so they better got a casualty actual society. So UK have only life, uh, investments and they call it and and uh, life uh, and uh, life and pensions and investment, but they don't have GI. But GI was introduced around my time, 
and, and the books were very poorly written, uh, but, but that's another story. And the reason is that we are not experts in GI, uh, but, but then there are many composite companies. And actuaries are very good in data. They can organize data. Our mathematics in GI at the time uh, were very basic, you know, chain ladder method and outstanding claim reserves, unearned premium reserves, very simple, you know. Uh, but, but we got a lot of reputation ma, because of composite so, so companies. But today, there are thousands of actuaries working in GI. Yeah? Uh, so what is actuarial science? Actuarial science is the application of mathematics uh, in areas where you can solve problems. A GI is a good example. But you must have credibility and set up a professional system of making sure standards are maintained. But of course, more laterly, uh, a lot of risk theory is brought in in the estimation of claim sizes and all that uh, risk theory, right? And stochastic processes. But now, uh, big data, data science come in. So we, if we incorporate data science into our, uh, our uh, into our toolkit and it becomes actual science, actuaries will become uh, data scientists. But data science is like math, it's big, right? Customer service is very big. But you can say that I'm, uh, uh, but a call center specialist is different, right? So actuaries is much more uh, the application of mathematical ideas, which data science is, to solve business problems, to solve practical problems. You see, I'm trying to story because if you ask the question, what is an actuary? Uh, 200 years ago, there's not even insurance, you see. 100 years ago, insurance is there. But 50 years ago, there's no general insurance. Yeah, yeah, I know investment actually 50 years ago, but 40, 50. Uh, so, so, so it's how the profession evolved, you see. But you, you have, you, you have the wind behind you, but then you've got a future which is opening up. Then you've got to decide. Yeah, you've got to decide. Okay, so, 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 uh, okay, Basel 2, I don't worry. Okay, so this one is a digital revolution. Huh? So, you all can see my arrow like this is, uh, uh, I, I, digital revolution to me began in 2007 uh, and there's a reason you can go back the inflection point in machine platform and crowds uh, all those books were uh, so 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 that is that is big uh, 2007. Uh, and, and then investment actuaries and GI really took off uh, uh, that uh, and then in, in South Africa uh, they have fellowship in banking fellowship in banking and 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 in IVOA is going to do a fellowship in banking yeah uh, Australia, Australia, a lot of actuaries went into data science, huh? uh, partly because uh, there were less jobs in life business. They went into data science and a lot of fintech company and they were very successful. Uh, and I, among with my colleagues, uh, and also we are also uh, encouraging a lot of people to go to health ecosystem like Vitality, CXA and all that. So that is the history. So you see, uh, uh, I, I actually think that uh, your DNA is, is mathematics. But you can go and do a degree course in mathematics, but then you don't have the business language, you see, of interest rate, uh, financial modeling, uh, uh, asset liabilities, economics. You can do be an economics, but you can be an economist and you can do roughly this, but you don't have our the core mathematical skill. So our core mathematical is, is our machinery, the machinery, right? So it's uh, much more rigorous. Accountants also can speak our language. But they will be, but they cannot compute the way we do. They cannot compute the way. We do. Uh, generally, our cognitive requirement for analysis is much higher. Yeah, so they will put it that way. So we are in a happy space. But if you are very good, you want to be Steve Hawkins, be a theoretical physicist, you are welcome to go there and win the Nobel Prize in physics. If you are that good. Yeah, but that is not necessarily practical in the way you want it. Uh, we are Malaysians. We are very practical. Huh? We want to cut, We want to get a good job. Good job. This one quite a good space. But you got two. Your mathematics must be there. Yeah. Once your mathematics was there, then your mindset. Huh? your mindset. The wind is behind you. So so then we go to the wind behind you, right? You must have a mathematics lah. Condition right. The rest you must have. Uh, you go to my sixty one tips, right? You must have a clear goal, and you must have drive. It's quite a, the two meta picks. You have you have meta pick and these two, and you want to do in a practical setting because I've driven my success. What is your oyster? So that was the mindset I had uh, when I was seventeen years old. And I, did, I, I to be honest, I'm I'm very flattered and honored not to be the president. You know, I I didn't even think about it. You know. but when I retired, I was sort of got time. I went to the council and they, they I, actually I, I, it was not. An ambition, you know, it was there, but but I went in and and I because I learned so many things. Not I would say that I had things to add to help uh, in terms of the governance. So so I'm that. Okay, are we good in that? Uh, 
because it's really 9.40. I, uh, the, the next slide, I don't want to talk too much lah, because I can... Uh, these are all new slides. I prepare for you, you know. I prepare for you. These are all the famous people. Uh, okay, uh, my choice one, uh, my choice. Only one is alive, uh, Chris, Chris Dakin, on a life. Uh, uh, Pascal uh, de Moira, okay, what happened to Firma? Firma should be there. They lost Firma. I like Firma. Uh, John Grant, DeWitt. Uh, DeWitt is a, a Dutch guy, also mortality. Uh, Edmund Haley, uh, he's a guy who uh, discovered a comet. Uh, discovered, he's uh, uh, Haley's comet. Uh, um, and then James Dawson, I can't remember, also mortality and life curves. Uh, Richard Price, William Morgan is from Equitable. Benjamin Gompers, Gompers curve, uh, Kramer, a Swiss dish with its risk theory. Uh, Lord Carr is American. Uh, he's a serious uh, uh, investment thinker. Uh, Finland is Scottish. Uh, Reddington is a person uh, who I have not met, but I've read a lot of his files uh, because uh, he let, he died in 84, I joined Prudential in 81, and he retired maybe 5-10 years before I joined Prudential, but his name is very famous in Prudential. Bernard Benjamin, I've met him. He writes a book Called analysis mortality, uh, but he passed away recently. And Christopher Dakin, I just talked to him the other day. These, these are the big names, right? but I don't want to talk too much about uh, individuals. Huh? So this guy is Chris Dakin. Huh? He says that actuaries are not only mathematicians. We integrate disciplines around mathematics, uh, and then we are a profession. So what is a profession? Is it a profession is a group of people who are credible, ethical, and are trusted. Uh, and, and whose interest is not just personal interest, uh, but public interest. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's how he define it. And what I like about what he say is that we, we have ethical standards. Uh -huh. so, 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 so that that's good. Uh, so uh, my colleagues and I at IFOA uh, begin to wonder whether the, uh, 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 whether the skill sets we have. Uh, because when I joined the profession, I have a fixed set of skill sets and I can work in life, general, uh, health insurance and pension scheme and investments, right? And the skill set I have is there. And it has not, it has evolved but not changed that much. Uh, I, I was given a safe and secure box, yeah, uh, iron rice bowl. Uh, and it's true, I got that, uh, the, the jobs came to me, I didn't have to go to the jobs uh, because I was, uh, when I came back to Malaysia, Almost many of the companies don't employ me, and I, when I joined, I was almost the top five almost immediately. Uh, uh, I, I I passed my exams in '84 uh, at the same time as uh, Zainal Kasim, who is still working, uh, Zainal and uh, uh, V Govin. Yeah, so it's a it's a multiracial team. Uh, we part, uh, we were the first Malaysian fellows together. Uh, uh, but before that, Steve Wong was already an actuary. Steve Wong, who's a friend of mine, uh, he's now living in Singapore. He's about He's about 20 years older than me, but he, 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 he works for John Hancock at the time, British-American John Hancock. But now he's a Singaporean, he's retired, but he's, uh, he has his own uh, business, he's a uh, very successful man. I know her family well. Uh, so why am I telling you this? Uh, uh, ah, it's a safe and secure box. So, so the safe and secure box, uh, but now, so my question, uh, which I started researching when I became a council member, then, is the service we are providing uh, to our actuaries today a safe and secure box? Because uh, because of the digital revolution and the fourth industrial revolution, because all jobs in the next hundred years will be slowly taken slowly taken away by computers and robots and machine and AI. Agree? All the tasks, the job will change. The tasks will be taken away. Yeah, even the booking of airline tickets, uh, uh, detecting of. Uh, uh, scans in your lungs, uh, driving. Driving will disappear in 25 years. Right? It's a question of time. Right? You wanna, uh, so, so even a lot of computations we do will disappear. You don't need to comp compound interest tables and learn a a n you know, double dot, you know. The, <laughs> your spreadsheet can do it faster than you. But yeah, but you need to understand the principles. So all that, so, uh, and also data science came up very strongly. And I was in NTUC at the time, we were worried about businesses. Our businesses, uh, whether it is supermarket we are in or insurance, uh, supermarket can, can become like Redmart uh, or Amazon.com uh, where supermarket disappeared because it's all home deliveries and all that, right? Uh, so uh, books books have disappeared completely uh, because of Amazon on delivery, book, book shops, rather, 
Yeah. But books also half di disappeared because of Kindle. Yeah? Uh, but so there are different dynamics at work. The issue is that what we are giving you in your generation, is it sufficient to secure? So the idea of a safe and secure box will not exist anymore. What you can, what we can give you is a spring box. A safe and secure box is fixed, ma. Surely you don't have to worry one. I don't have to learn much since I left uh, university, you know. Uh, since I left uh, FIA. Because my job doesn't change very much, ma. But now, I will say that to you. What I say to you is that your skill set will have to be updated. But more important is your mindset. Yeah, mindset. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. You all follow my argument? Yeah, so it's a, so, so the Institute of Actuaries, uh, about 30 of us are council members, work very hard uh, to say that our skill sets, we need to change to incorporate data science, machine learning, and AI. Yeah, and we are going to do it next year already, this year, in fact. But the mindset is the more important mind. Because with the skill set and the mindset, uh, uh, with the skill set and mindset, uh, uh, you will be able, uh, my battery is running low, I just got to, I, 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 I purposely unplug my thing from my battery because there's a big, okay. So the skill set, with a skill set which is constantly uh, modernizing, uh, 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 the mindsets will allow you to be very capable in your, uh, to be very, very capable in your, uh, uh, to be very capable in your navigation in a world. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so schools teach you geography maps, uh, which is very good, or Malay. But the, your mindset is more important than the skill set. You agree with me? You agree with me? Yeah. Uh, you can learn a Taekwondo from a Korean guy, right? But Bruce Lee learned Jit Kwan. You're, you're familiar with Bruce Lee, uh, Lee Xiao Long? Yes. He's a master. La. Master of the highest order. You all must go and read his, uh, look all his videos. Right? Because what he is capable of physically has never been repeated. So, so uh, freestyle boxing, uh, uh, what do you call that? The, um, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, the one where all the fighters fight freestyle. Uh, uh, mixed martial arts. So he created mixed martial arts because he taking the shortest distance. So, so he has free form. Uh, his thing is the shortest distance with a minimum of effort. But he's capable of things which, and he reads very widely, eh? yoga, meditation, philosophy. Eh? So, so it's not just physical eh? and it's personal mastery. Eh? But he died at the age of 32 or 33, which is a shame. Uh, but, uh, so what I mean, okay, so, so his, his mindset is amazing. Eh? His mindset is amazing. So he can learn new things, you see. So what we want is mindset, okay. So, so I, uh, what's the time now? I think 9.45, I think it's okay. Uh, the, the questions may not be that important. Uh. So, yeah. so, 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 so the, the, the skill set, uh, on the left, uh, uh, I really say that you already made a decision because you know why? Data science, machine learning, and AI is just like advanced statistics, okay? Advanced statistics and computing. So we are already uh, mathematicians. So, uh, so mathematics consists of probability, statistics, uh, compound interest, life contingency, because demography is also mathematics. Uh, economics is not mathematics. Uh, financial analysis is not mathematics. But all this is mathematics. Data science, machine learning, AI is mathematics. Yeah? So we already want to incorporate. doesn't mean that you are a specialist, that you are not a specialist in, say, statistics, yeah? a deep statistics. Yeah? So but these are branches of computational sciences. Some of them has very heavy overlap might want to go into computing and data analysis, you, you're, you're welcome to go. But you go there, you don't have the financial discipline and the modeling aspect and the lingo. The lingo is important, you see, it's a domain. Uh, if, you, if you join us, uh, the domain uh, gives you a ticket. Uh, say, uh, how, how do, uh, so what's the difference between domain and, and the mathematics? Uh? Uh, so, so driving is uh, a skill, right? Driving, you can uh, driving a skill. Uh, but if you want to drive, uh, say if you're a sports driver, it's a different thing already. Sports driver because it's, it, because you you have the you understand where to go. Uh, okay, walking is a, okay. Running is a skill, uh, Running is a, but running marathon is uh, you you is is a bit different already because. You, you, uh, because the practice of it, the, the clothes you wear, and the language is different. Right? You, you get what I mean? 
so so the question what what do you want to do with the skill right so so you can go into computing then the people you meet is different yeah so or data analysis the people you meet but you go into actual the people you meet and the industry it leads you to is different uh, or maybe cooking will be a good one huh? you, you study zicha zicha will take you to a different place right but if you study uh French cooking will take to a different place, right? So, so is what domain you choose to practice? Is actually cooking, ma? One is also cooking, one is steaming, they are not frying, ma? All same, ma? But then, the, but the way it's applied is different, you see, and the ingredients are different. So you got to choose what you want to apply. So you are all all good cooks, right? You are data science, so you can go to data science, and it will be different. Well, the conference will have a different feel to it, yeah. But you come to actually the conference is more financial modeling, now climate range banking. So generally, the pay is higher, ma. Are you? <laughs> I'm just joking. Don't, don't record that. Do you hear my? Do you hear my joke? You didn't. Okay, now my. <laughs> so so there's data science. So 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 you all understand what I'm saying? You understand, right? Okay. So 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 this one. So on the but but the, but the more important thing is that uh, apart from just introducing skills, uh, if you look at domains, domains. Uh, what is interesting now is health ecosystem. Banking is interesting climate risk, uh, fintech companies, insure tech companies. In India, Africa, and Singapore, there are a lot of, uh, if, even Grab taxis. Do you have Grab taxis in Malaysia? Grab, is Grab in Malaysia? Yeah, Grab is in Malaysia. Yeah, okay. Grab has quite a number of actual science uh, students, you know, or, or actuaries, uh, CXA also. So, uh, they may not be fellows, uh, but they, they, need, they wanted their thinking, you see, uh, because we are, we are generally quite good in numbers. Uh. It's actually numbers. But if you have the language about uh, financial modeling, risk, uh, probability, outcomes, um, um, uh, benefits, uh, data science will not give you that, you see. Yeah. But data science, yeah. Uh, and also, the other area is biostatistics. So there are a lot of new disciplines. So if I look at this slide, uh, it is about uh, being multi difference uh, to try to. Okay, so so the next slide I have is on data science. Huh? So data science, I, I don't know. Uh, okay, the, 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 the difference, the data science um, uh, has three skill sets. Huh? Uh, we, we, we are very strong in uh, uh, statistics uh, and industry knowledge. Uh, data science is very strong in data hacking and statistics. They have less industry knowledge and appreciation of risk. I, I would say that, but we are moving more into the data hacking part. So therefore, we will cover that. Uh, uh, in terms of immediate goals, we are going to have a certificate data. It is already uh, on ready, but that one is not part of the qualification. But we are also going to bring data science into our syllabus in a big way. Uh, uh, more next year, but we are beginning to do it this year. Yeah, uh, we are going to have a fellowship in banking that is likely to come out in 2021 uh, or 22, 2022, and we are going to have a certificate in climate change now uh, because there's a big thing. So, so you can see. Uh, that the domains is expanding. Yeah? So, of course, you, uh, you come out, uh, uh, the, the clearest job will be in a, uh, general insurance and uh, life insurance yeah? because there are regulations require trees. So, so there are many paths to success. Right? You can be uh, a fellow uh, and then go on be a virtuoso or, or, or a master, or you can become uh, an associate and you can do many things. Yeah? Or you can be a fellow in banking. A fellow in climate science in the future, right? So, so, so there are a lot of things you could do, and the things you learn it doesn't have to be from IFOA. Yeah, this is only foundation. Uh, you can learn many things, and and that's the part we're going to take to to uh, later in mindset. So, so it's nine fifty one. I don't want to talk too long already. Uh, I okay. So, Rankton is one of the. It's probably one of the greatest actuaries. You know, he says that actuaries uh, uh, have. Four values, uh, accuracy, uh, cautiousness, consistency, and reticence. Uh, we, are, we, are, we don't have vices. Uh, vices mean something negative. But, uh, but we have um, besetting virtues. I, I need to get the quote. Uh, just give me a moment. Uh, see your hand. Uh, because I, 
I got the quote this morning, but I didn't print it up. Ah, I read the quote to you, okay? Uh, I do not think the profession, and, and the reason I quote him, uh, he died in 1684, but this, is, uh, uh, this quote was given when he accepted his gold medal in 1968. And he said that if you want to say anything, it's a very short piece, but this was the most powerful thing he said. And because of my uh, interest and background in psychology, I know uh, the, the character traits he picked uh, were very carefully chosen. And he's a very careful man and he's a very bright man. Huh? Yeah. I do not think the profession has any besetting vices. Besetting means surrounding, vices means bad things. Right? But I sometimes think that perhaps it has besetting virtues. Uh, that, that means the virtue is not so good, huh? but they are all good things. Huh? As a profession, we are apt to be accurate, cautious, consistent and reticent. And in this lies our strength. But if we do not leave enough room for impulse and imagination, they can be a weakness. The actuary who is only an actuary is not an actuary. Uh, okay, so what does he mean by that? Uh, uh, most of uh, actuaries uh, who work in life business and penance want to get it right, completely right, accurate. Ma? And things must be right and must be consistent. Yeah, and we are very careful. We will not say something or even on our video uh, because kiasi <laughs> kiasu Right? Okay, understand. And we are reticent. Reticent means uh, shy. Uh, don't want to say things. Uh, these uh, kind of people, you can trust one. When they say something, they are always accurate. Don't simply bullshit one. These kind of people. Right now, uh, I'm shy. And accurate, chun chun one, cautious, don't simply say things one, no bullshit one. Very good, make very good actuaries. But he say, if this is overdeveloped, it becomes our weakness, which means that we are too much of it. He don't want to criticize, ma. he said, but these four values belong to some of the personality structure of certain personality types because I do psychology. Ma. So we need more different diversity. Not all of you are like that. And I'm not, I'm, I'm quite good in this, but I'm not like that, yeah? So he said that you need imagination and impulse. Imagination must be imaginative, okay? That means do things differently, ma. But would you do things differently? Ah, that's a good question, right? This is given in 1968, 50 years ago, okay? But then I, then we map into what they are saying, what you need to survive in a digital world later, okay? So the next point is, Imagination, uh, impulse. Impulse is not being impulsive. Impulsive means hasty. What I mean by impulse is to trust uh, your impulse, your gut, your gut feeling, your instinct. Businessmen have that. Ma. Businessmen have that. Uh, okay. So this is very powerful, right? Very powerful because I can notice that in the UK, we are over dominated by the four values. And they are important values for a lot of the jobs we need to sign certificate on. But we also need to liberate uh, and create space for the new values. And what are new values? Uh, and this uh, we work on very hard. Nah? Curiosity, adaptability, and growth mindset nah, was introduced uh, as part of our strategy development, the VSMD strategy. Very much. We, we, I show you a chart just now called VSMD, right? Vision, skill set. Can you remember? Someone answer me. You don't answer me. Uh, uh, just now, I show you a slide called Vision, Skill Set, and Mindset, right? Tell Ubo, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You all remember that slide? Yes. Yeah. Uh, why? Why? Uh, when I ask you to give me your opinions and questions, is there no problem? No, no, we can't. Why can't you? No opinions to give, huh? No, I think just now they answered the no, we can't is to the uh, when you first share the slide. Uh, okay. So we we'll, we we'll talk about that, huh? Uh. So now, so now that these are the new mindsets, huh? Okay, 
Okay, I, I want some feedback already. So, so where am I? Uh, can some people write some feedback on the chat line? On the conversation so far, what is missing? What should we talk more of? I want. Uh, I don't see whether people are listening or not. Actually, actually, I got curious about something and and I have a question. If you, if you don't mind me asking. Ask the question, now. Yeah, because when you shared about the the timeline that uh, how actual actually developed over the years, right? You can see it's more, it's getting more and more diverse, and we are embracing new values now. So, and there are more more of the other other um. Uh, new job opportunities like uh, the data scientists that are coming up. So in 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 the future, what what is act, uh, what actually act, act will actually be? What what is our identity? Is it is it these beliefs and and the the values instead of a specific skill set uh, skill sets like engineering? They know how to do engineer uh, engineering work. So for actuaries, what what is the co core identity of ourselves? Level uh, mathematics, the holding thing is mathematics. It's a, a mathematics in a practical setting. That's the only thing we hold. Just like accountancy, right? Okay, I wanna, uh, you, because, and, and in, in 100 years' time, I'm not even sure the profession exists because, because I'm not even sure life insurance will be, will, will be life insurance company in 100 years' time. So I can't. Uh, so, but in the next thirty years, uh, I don't have to answer your question too. Uh, it's quite easy, ma. What is hold this? The professional body, and you have job. But but human society will change dramatically in the next hundred years, uh, Very dramatic. Now is the uh, 1920, 1920, uh, I think cars only coming out. Cars. So horse carriages disappear and all that, right? Uh, Henry Ford was uh, around the turn of the century, uh, last century. So, so uh, uh, there, are, there are more horses in America in millions, you know, because there's no horses. So we are like a horse, no? actually. So, okay, maybe not a horse, but you know what I mean, right? In a hundred years time, but would you worry about that? Because because life insurance pension scheme will be, society will be organized differently in hundred years time. So your your question, uh, if it's next 10 years, Malaysia insurance company still around, uh, you, the, the answers I gave you, is good for the next 10, 20 years. And then what, what will come out in the 30, 40 years, uh, also not very clear. So, so how do we proceed? But we need to have the new mindset because new mindset help you to navigate. Right? Mm -hmm. to, to adapt to the situation, the different environment, is it? Yeah, that's obvious, right? And, and, and all professions have the same problem. All profession, medicine also. Doctors also, how do, how medicine will be delivered, how accountants will be done, all tax judging also. You see what I mean? So my, my answer is not specific to, uh, it is specific to actuarial, but, but that problem is universal because we are living in a digital. So you must look at revolution, right? Industrial revolution and the digital revolution, right? Uh, that's why it uh, really the phone. Yeah. So these are uncertainties, uh, but, but but that's a good question. Uh, uh, but I, I can't answer you because you can't answer me how human society is going to function, how economics. Uh, uh, because China don't have insurance company until the last twenty years, uh, yeah, in a communist system, right? Right. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, social security is pension scheme now. But the mathematics, I think, will still be around. The application of mathematics will be around. So the equivalent to you, 100 years from now, may not call himself actually, la, but he might be still using mathematics, but he might use very little mathematics using his, uh, maybe that time we don't even have to use our finger, no? we can, because the iPhone, uh, the equivalent iPhone can read what our mind is thinking. They are already, uh, uh, they are already researching that. Uh, our eye science can already pass signal to the iPhone. Ma. It's very expensive, it's already uh, being researched. So, so at that time, you know, uh, what's, uh, at that time, human society will be very different. That's why you ask me what we'll actually do in the future. Future when? 10 years time? 10 years roughly the same now. But 50 years, I don't think so. By the time 50 years, you're 70 years old, now. You, you might be giving a talk like this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, any other question? Do we learn programming since in No, uh, uh, Kang Chu, uh, if, you are, if you are good at it, go and learn. Uh, you must have the passion. 
because it's a uh, because it's not so fast eh? uh, because okay don't don't say the chemical things can cover okay uh, some solution okay spreadsheet is a sophisticated program right but you still got to fit in the data ma. and some programs uh, C language and all that will solve certain data and I Python will solve uh, want to design a new game you cannot say hey computer design a new game for me uh, with ping pong and then uh, with scoring uh, you, you still can't you see because AI currently is on narrow intelligence right so you say that okay AI you play go with this guy uh, he can but AI, you fry quotidian for me, you can't fry quotidian. So only you could go robots. Robots, you fry quotidian, you could switch the engine on, you see. But, but the, the, the work, so you, if you're interested, so uh, come to, if you want to, you, you learn. Because when you learn language, uh, you are better than people who, do, who, who don't learn language. But it doesn't mean that, uh, but it depends on what job you have. Lah. If I were you, because you ask a question, I will learn. Uh, because it's only, but to be a master, you've got to practice this for two or three years. Lah. Yeah, to learn is 10, 20 weeks, right? Uh, a new language, 10, 20 weeks, and you know the principles. I actually, I, I, I did some short programming courses, but that is for senior executives. So I know uh, we're choosing a lot of uh, parts of uh, of the language to solve some problems, uh, input, output. But that one is, uh, but if you, if you, if you want to be a master in Python or C or whatever is the, or even spreadsheets, you, you go and learn because that is a skill. Because the next 10 years you go there, uh, uh, I, I think it was quite good in C uh, uh, or virtual basic. So I went in, in Prudential in 84, I wrote uh, a lot of programs. So they don't have to send their instructions to the central. Do you all know what a Fortran is, Fortran language? There's a language called Fortran uh, and then there's basic. I, I think I learned V basic, okay. <laughs> so so they, they will send, uh, so the senior guy will say, oh, I want this, I want this. Then you'll go to a, that and they come back, go come back, and then it's in punch card one, you know, punch card. But I, I, but at that time, I was able to learn be basic to do cash flow projection and spreadsheet uh, that is not so flexible. So I did it. I, I got a paper and I read it in 86. And, and besides, I can give the answer immediately, you see. I can do it and say tomorrow I can give you the spreadsheet because I can I can output it. Uh, because I'm in control, ma, because it's distributed processing. But you go to the mainframe, I, you don't even know what a mainframe is. I okay? can see how world changed. In Prudential, there was a mainframe and the IT department very powerful. They, they'll give you runs, you know. So every valuation is you send, you crash in and then in the next few days, they'll come out. So you can see, I, uh, uh, so, uh, so come to the answer is go and learn. But all of you learn different things. Huh? Like can learn this. Huh? My wife asked uh, me whether my son should go and learn programming or coding. I say go and learn. Uh, if if he, he must, the body must have interest. Uh, but sometimes interest can be created. Huh? Uh, I would say go and learn at your age. Go and learn because uh, I have a feeling that by learning you understand the principles and then you can then manage people who are doing the programming for you. The AI is uh, very good in narrow intelligence. Instead so of Go, they are outbeating human beings. They only do Go, is it? Eh? Uh, but their Go is longer computational, you know? it's actually creative because they don't understand how, uh, because they, they teach the Go deep mind machine how to learn. And, and they come up with combinations uh, which are groundbreaking, which human beings have not thought of, uh, which is very creative because Go is a uh, 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 Weichi, right? Weichi, yeah. Uh, your black and white beats, huh? The number of combinations is uh, not infinite, but uh, it's very much more complex than chess, you see. So they were, uh, so you go, uh, so 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 a, a deep mind computer can do go, but you ask them to do jeopardy, they can't do jeopardy, eh? or, or or some other game. So so they are still good in narrow intelligence, but the 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 big debate is that when can the machine cross over? Uh, and do general intelligence and where and can machine have consciousness consciousness ah uh, that one is philosophy already not for today okay philosophy uh, the, some scientists believe in by by 2050 uh the computational power could cross over and maybe subjective experience uh, and consciousness like taste love a machine could have okay that one philosophy already uh, that one another day okay let's go back let's go back okay so so now uh, so, so curiosity, adaptability, and growth mindset. You must be curious, lah. You are not curious, then you are looking inward. Then it's a bit harder. Adaptability means that 
willingness to experiment uh, and to tell yourself uh, that you is your is your human gift is your human gift uh, to choose what you believe you are i don't want to on video one i don't want on video one that is a choice you make a choice you make you can also say i choose to believe i want to on video there's a choice you make i can't tell you what to do only a human being can say that a, who, a, a dog when they see some food they will eat a human can say i don't want to eat that even though i'm very much into it oh because you can intervene something here. so you have a choice and and i'm trying to get to you so that you can hear me whether you're hearing me or not that's why i said you have a choice 40 years ago or 47 three years ago or whatever i made a choice and i told myself that i will be in a particular way so i was going to be curious and experiment so i made a choice i can also make a choice i'm always like that always, it doesn't matter, you know. Who cares? Nobody cares except you care, because you are going to live it yourself, right? So, so this adaptability is really important. Growth mindset uh, comes from a very specific term invented by my lecturer, uh, Carol Dweck, from Columbia University. It is about to believe that you are not fixed. Uh, so, my my friends from Malaysia, you are, don't believe that you are only disabled. You are never. You, be, you, you must always believe that uh, things can change. If you do not succeed, uh, it's because you do not know the answer yet. It doesn't mean that you are stupid or weak or incapable. Yeah. So never believe that you are fixed. Believe that you can grow with, pers with ex perseverance and experimentation and get to know yourself. Get to know yourself. Self-awareness is very important. Yeah. You must know yourself what you're good at. Yeah. So do that. Yeah. So, so you got curious. Uh, okay, curious and definitely growth mindset is from literature. Uh, what you need to survive in the digital world. Curiosity is very obvious. Uh, adaptability and growth mindset also combines into creativity. Uh, and the, because one is about curiosity and, and experimenting. It gives you cur so ideation. Ideation is the idea generation, all in the same areas. Yeah. The next three came later. Courage, imagination, and judgment came later. That was after COVID-19 came in. Because what we are very good at uh, is to reduce all the problem into risk and then model the risk. But, but COVID-19 is not risk because there's no model. Uh, although within it, there are small world risks, but in a big world, it's full of uncertainty. Uncertainty are uh, risks which you can't measure. Yeah, so so when there's uncertainty, uh, it comes to complex system, and the fact that the world is interconnected, the world is in globalization and digital, everything is aggregated, financial markets. So when one one small little butterfly move, the whole world uh, can have a storm. Someone in Wuhan maybe add something from a bat, and the whole world. Close down, and now we've got how many? Uh, two, uh, one million deaths, two million deaths, and twenty-five million cases. One person at something in Wuhan, the whole world becomes like that. Uh, that shows uh, the butterfly effect. Yeah, the butterfly effect. So in this world, uh, things becomes un intrinsically unstable or uncertain. Yeah, climate climate risk is another one, right? Uh, inequality, how come? So, so in that world, uh, you need courage, courage, and you need imagination, and you need judgment. Judgment is uh, a brucey idea, uh, to go or not to go, right? When is it coming? Uh, uh, so he must have, ju have that judgment. Uh, the fisherman, right? Oh, this is a big fish, I'm going to come up. There's no books on it, you know, there's no books. I can give you a book on how to fly kites or how to swim, but you still can't swim or fly kites. Yeah, you must have that. You must be able to go into that space, you see. So th the fisherman knows, the shepherd knows when the ship is going to come back. This judgment. Yeah. So so you cannot say the model say that the what is wrong with this company? What is wrong with this cell? It's judgment, gut feel. Okay. Imagination is 
don't 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 if you have a job offer from Japan, go because you're young. Go out, go out. You're young. You're resilient. Go, judgment, uh, imagination. You know the world is your oyster. Um, travel, read new things, uh, and knowledge is so available to you now. So available. When I was a young boy. I don't have books in the house, so that's why I read the same books all the time, which is actually it's quite good also because you really can make a master. That's why uh, all the, the books I have I publish now is I read the same books every year because uh, sometimes it's better to read 10 books uh, 100 times than read 100 books one time. Yeah. So you, you get me? So you can think about that. Because now internet gives you too little knowledge which you are quite shallow in. Uh. But now the world is, when I want to find out about actual science, I go to not Bukit Bintang, the, the one opposite the railway and 20 miles from my house uh, to British Council. And you go in and then there's no books on actual science and the encyclopedia have only one reference, right? So that's it. But now you find actual science is anything you want, you can find. Even go and start studying now, tomorrow, tonight. Uh, but but doesn't mean that it's good or bad. I'm just saying how it is. So curiosity, uh, no, that's curiosity. So car imagination and judgment. Car courage is obvious. Courage means so the people who tend to be accurate, cautious, uh, consistent, and resistant want to get it right, right? Uh, and that is very important when you're doing something within a framework. But if the framework is not correct, like you got COVID-19, the framework I cannot go to work. What is more important, being accurate, cautious, or being courageous and adaptable and imaginative? In a world of uncertainty, uh, the new values are very important because you need courage. You need doesn't mean you simply do, you no, know, but with judgment and with imagination. You see the point? The highly complementary skills. Yeah. And some of us will be more this way, some of us more that way. It's okay. But it's good for you to ask yourself because you are still very young. Don't believe necessarily the image. You have created for yourself. Self-image is very important. 